Hey, what's up, you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my weekly review of the CW's The Originals. This week we've seen Season 3, Episode 22, which is called The Bloody Crown, which is, of course, the Season 3 finale. And, uh, yeah, really good episode. Um, definitely a uh, finale worthy, and... I don't, I don't know if it's the... I don't think it's the best finale we've ever had, but definitely one that really followed through for the most part with, uh, how great I thought last week's episode was. Um, to be honest, I actually think I did enjoy last week's episode a little bit more, but that's because we just had such great, you know, somewhat one-on-one -on -one dialogue back and forth between uh, Marcel and uh, Klaus. Um, but with this one, you know, it did concentrate on that in a different light, in a different uh, way. Um, you know, because we've seen this, uh, the main concentration of it was, of course, Klaus eventually going on trial, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, but yeah, overall, really good finale. Uh, I don't think I, I want to wait until uh, next year to see season four, though. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's been a really good season all around, you know. It had its uh, weaker points, you know, more so towards the beginning of the season, but really, really picked up, and the last few episodes have just been incredible. Um, you know, so uh, Marcel, you know, we see him uh, you know, coming out of the water at the beginning. Um, and again, sorry if this review is a little more brief and stuff, but yeah, I kind of just want to get to the main point of it all, <laughs> which is, of course, you know, the trial scene and such. Although we did have some good stuff, you know, leading up to it. Um, you know, we had a really uh, touching sort of one-on-one -on -one scene between uh, Elijah and Haley. Um, you know, they're actually in, in bed together after what happened last week, of course. Um, Haley basically just reassures Eliza. Uh, Eliza. <laughs> Eliza. <laughs> She reassures Elijah that, you know, he's not alone, you know, he's still sort of feeling the weight of what he did to Marcel. Um, so I really like that scene. And we see Klaus with Hope. Um, you know, he talks about how, you know, people who have loved him have come to, you know, regret her. They've been put in, you know, such harm's way because of their attachment to him. Um, but he says how you'll do right by her. And then we also had uh, Freya, you know, she's pretty uh, paranoid, you know, because even though they supposedly put down their uh, main threat that they seen coming, um, and Marcel supposedly, you know, she could not sleep last night, and, you know, she's basically just uh, sort of thinking about every little way, and then we see her, um, I'm not sure if someone knocked or not, not much as I fade into the darkness, sort of. <laughs> Okay, no one did. Anyway, I might, might want to cap, but let's not start that now, please. <laughs> um, but, you know, she ends up using this map that someone she had used uh, earlier this season. And, you know, we basically see all classes on these are again converging on New Orleans. And this uh, vampire ends up popping in, and she, en she ends up uh, getting Freya poisoned with the blade she had. Um, a lot of characters were really on, on the line in this episode. You know, we had Klaus, of course, uh, you know, basically being cornered, <laughs> um, you know, figuratively, eventually, literally surrounded. And, you know, then we also had Elijah, Cole, and again, even Freya in peril. Um, so it really uh, gave us a decent feel of, you know, how high the stakes were, and again, how personal they were coming off of last week's episode. Um, you know, Marcel enters the compound because they had found a way around the deed trick they had used with Freya. Um, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, okay. And then, you know, Marcel sort of runs down uh, Klaus and, you know, er, you know how he would talk about family and stuff. You know, it's sort of the same thing he was talking about last week. And then Elijah takes the blame for it. You know, he puts it all on himself. Um, let's see. And uh, Freya also says the power that she used to sort of depower Lucian is gone. She's not going to be able to get that exact uh, uh, amount back again. She's not going to be able to get that particular ability back again to be able to pull that off. Um, which again is making you wonder how the hell is this thing going to go any other way. Um, or any uh, positive way anyway. Um, Cole, you know, he sort of gets into a bit of a confrontation with Marcel, you know, because he talks about how he loved to be in a two, and he 
feels his pain basically, but Marcel ends up biting him and Elijah as well. And that bite's supposed to be incur uh, uncurable, whatever you want to say. Or incurable. I, I don't know. Oh, I can't think right now. Um, you know, which is pretty brutal to see. And then Klaus, you know, he was pushed to the side, but then we see him rise up and he has those hybrid eyes finally, man. <laughs> And then him and Marcel are about to charge at each other, and then uh, Rebecca actually you know, steps in the middle of both of them. But I was just happy. I was I was more happy to see Klaus's hybrid eyes than uh, Rebecca. <laughs> um, and that's because uh, you know one of the nitpick, nitpicks I had about the season, or one of the gripes I had with the season, is that just continuously feels more and more like uh, they weaken Klaus just to you know make it a convenience for the story to make things more difficult for the main character. Um, so I was actually happy to see that the writers do still remember it exists, you know, they do still remember that Klaus is more powerful than they've been showing, um, or they I, at least somewhat remember how powerful he's supposed to be. Uh, it's unfortunate we didn't see that again in the episode, but I kind of hope they have a scene where he just completely rages out, and I sort of felt like, uh, Klaus did get a few hits on Marcel, uh, when it was him and Elijah fighting him. Um, you know, and Cole as well. So I wonder if Klaus actually did use, if he did get a chance to use his full hybrid powers, maybe he'd actually still be able to edge Marcel out. Um, at least for a little bit, because eventually, you know, Marcel is supposed to be this unkill unkillable, upgraded thing now, but still, I think Klaus might actually have the edge over him, at least temporarily, if he uses full power. Um, but it's at least good to see that still exist, you know. <laughs> I just hope they really uh, show off what Klaus can do again at some point in the future, you know, similar to what they did in episode 8 of season 1, that far back. Um, but yes, yeah, so I did like that. And of course, it was good to see Claire hold as Rebecca again, you know. Um, I do hope she becomes a series regular on the show again. Uh, she, he's, I could easily see him actually doing that for uh, season four. But then again, they could, of course, pull something that she's just in there for the first couple episodes or something along those lines. But, um, you know, I know she wants to be here for, with her uh, family, and it just makes it easier to, you know, with the traveling and stuff, not to be full time with the originals. And she also wants to do other stuff. But, come on, <laughs> it's called the originals. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, of course, it was based on, the show came because of uh, Klaus's popularity. Um, then it, centers, it originally centered on him, Elijah, and Rebecca. But, anyway. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, okay. I guess so Rebecca shows up, and then him and Rebecca talk one-on-one. -on -one. Marcel says he's not backing down everything that's happened. It's been building up. Um, Rebecca says, you know, he's not the same, you know. Uh, she says the man she knew and loved wouldn't fancy himself judge, jury, and executioner. But Marcel sort of stands his ground. Um, and Elijah, you know, he asks Klaus to take care of both Hope and Haley, you know. Uh, he also says this is his fault, it wasn't Marcel's, pretty much that Marcel was justified. Again, you know, I'm always rooting for Klaus, you know, but even I was saying last week that I can't really disagree with Marcel, I see where he's coming from. Um, so I did like that acknowledgement scene there again. Um, you know, even Klaus last week said Marcel is, you know, justified and stuff, so. Uh, of course, uh, Marcel actually, uh, agrees to a trial, you know, but it's basically gonna be a you know, full of uh, Klaus's enemies, so what do you think's gonna happen? <laughs> Which way do you think it's gonna go? Um, Haley basically says, you know, you need Klaus, they need to keep him alive, uh, you know, for the sake of hope, and, you know, just for the family in general. Uh, and then we actually get a really nice scene between Klaus and Haley, and, you know, this makes, this makes my, uh, you know, Clayley feels come out a little bit. Uh, you know, I think it's gonna be a while before like Elijah and Haley are gone, but I still feel like Haley might be the next like main love interest for Klaus again. I don't know. It would make sense for the baby, right? <laughs> uh, I do like Klaus, and uh, I mean I do like Elijah and Haley together, but still I, I feel like they've been developing and sort of building back the Klaus and Haley uh, connection a little bit. Um, but you know, again, that's not the point of the episode though. But I did like the scene between them two here. Uh, you know, Klaus saying he was wrong about Haley, you know, he, he could never trust her, you know, if uh, Hope was in her hands, you know, how she basically, how he had basically, you know, condemned her not to be able to be around her previously, you know, back in season two, if you guys remember that, um, you know, the whole curse thing with Jackson and stuff, um, but he says he was wrong, and, you know, he actually feels some sort of comfort knowing Haley's out there protecting Hope, um, so I like that quite a bit, and we even get Klaus, you know, sort of, uh, 
caressing her neck and cheek a little bit and you know sort of holding her like that and you know Ailey sort of going like that when he walked away I don't know <laughs> you know it's definitely uh their connection definitely grew or improved uh since season one for sure um we'll see what goes on later on but uh you know again we get an embrace between uh Klaus and uh, Rebecca which is always nice to see Claire Hull and just Morgan always have really good back and forths together um, you can really sense their deep connection as siblings. Um, and Klaus says, you know, tells Rebecca, oh, you always say I could talk my way out of hell. Uh, which I liked a lot. You know, any kind of, you know, Klaus is one of the greatest uh, speakers I've seen in any TV show or movie ever. And, uh, you know, just the way he speaks and the way he carries himself. You know, he's, and then plus he's pretty much a genius. You know, even Marcel, you know, has said he's the smartest person he's ever met. Um, and really this ends up being part of Klaus and the rest of the Michelson's plan and what, what Klaus ends up doing at the trial here, which again is just showing Klaus's brilliance when it comes to what doing what he needs to do to protect his family. Um, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, you know, Marcel basically points out some people in the crowd, you know, talking about everything that Klaus has done to them, you know, like how, uh, this little petty annoyances that they had given Klaus and then Klaus will, like, burn their mother alive or you know, kill their wife or make them do it or, you know, certain things along those lines, you know, and Klaus acknowledges all of that. Um, and see, and, uh, Rebecca does defend Klaus, you know, she speaks up for him, um, saying a, a lot of the, the people in the crowd had done the same, you know, they had committed similar sins since becoming what they are. Uh, but the hex ends up taking over, of course, that's still part of Rebecca, and she, you know, you know, supposedly ends up turning into a more aggressive version of herself again, and she turns on Klaus, and, you know, basically saying how, you know, basically her and Marcel agree that, you know, she should hate Klaus more than anyone, really. Um, but we've talked about the Klaus and Rebecca relationship before. But then Klaus sort of flips it around, you know, he starts talking about Davina, um, how she had betrayed his family time and time again, and it was only at her final demise that she, you know, gave, like, a smidgen of, uh, you know, proving yourself, and even then, you know, which I found kind of funny, I know, really here, Klaus is basically sagging Marcel, and really, really trying to provoke him, um, but I can't say I, I didn't enjoy, uh, Klaus basically, uh, mocking Davina, <laughs> uh, Davina just found to be very frustrating, although her, her exit was well done and stuff, I, I'm honestly glad she's gone, I'm glad the character's gone, um, not that the actress did a bad job, just the way that she was written is always frustrating since season one, really. <laughs> so I did like Klaus or talking about her like that. <coughs> um, and he talks about all of them, you know, he had given all of them, you know, this, uh, repayment of immortality, and basically, again, they're all alive because he will, that he chose this. Um, you know, there are a lot of other things he said, but I can't really, uh, do Joseph Morgan or Klaus justice, I'm not gonna try and, uh, run through all of that. Uh, Marcel ends up using Papa Tunde's blade. Um, you know, end up, you know, deciding they want to condemn Klaus to a fate worse than death. You know, they want to have him live through, like, dec probably decades of agony before Marcel would finally decide to kill him for good. Um, and then, you know, you figure out that, you know, what we kind of, well, you should kind of know, uh, beforehand, but, you know, like, oh, yeah, you're like, oh, oh yeah, that makes sense. And Michelson's always that plan. It turns out that is a, the plan to keep Klaus alive, you know, again, talking his way out of hell. Um, you know, and so Klaus was able to basically get to a point of where he would stay alive. You know, although being tortured, he made this big sacrifice for his family. And uh, with this, Freya is able to do something for uh, Elijah, Cole, and Rebecca as well. Um, I did like the moments uh, of Marcel looking at Klaus uh, afterward, though. You know, you can tell he's sort of shaken by, you know, sh shaken by having to do that to someone who he thought of as a father, uh, you know, his mentor, his savior. As he said, you can tell he's still sort of affected by doing that to Klaus. Um, so I really like that. Uh, it makes it even more interesting to think about where Marcel's going to go in season four. Um, then we had Vincent, you know, he basically just really rips into Marcel, you know, talking about he might, might be uh, just as bad as uh, Klaus. Um, you know, just all the violence and the chaos that's caused with what he's doing, you know, it's just really not what Marcel wants, so Marcel's going to be opening this new church um, for which vampire humans, anyone to come, and just to be against, uh, you know, the way Marcel is supposedly going about things right now. Um, 
let's see. And then again, part of uh, Freya is part of it. You know, keeping uh, Elijah, um, Cole, and Rebecca. You know, she basically uses a spell similar to what Dahlia did. Um, basically using Klaus as a life force, you know, to keep them, you know, sort of suspended in the steep sleep until Haley is able to find the cures for each of them or figure something out. And, you know, again, we, well, we also had this uh, letter, Klaus had written to Hope, you know, which uh, Haley had in an envelope. And Klaus talks about how he made this uh, big sacrifice, you know, for the name of his family again, you know, he did it for the greater good of his family. And even though Klaus is still alive, yeah, he got out of it, but he's the one making the biggest sacrifice of all here. Um, because while uh, Elijah Cole and Rebecca, you know, they're, yeah, they're in poor condition, but they're in this, like, uh, sleep of, you know, this really well, well laid out, uh, beautiful um, home area um, that both Fred and Klaus actually envisioned, you know, and they think it's actually more based of, off of what Klaus is wanting. Um, because, you know, they're drawing his life force, which is interesting that we'd see that with Klaus. Um, and Klaus is the one making this big sacrifice because he's been putting through this endless uh, pain and agony, you know, over and over whatever he's going through in there. Um, he has been stabbed with it before, though, so I did feel a little bit and that they brought back the Papatunde blade again. But, you know, you don't always have to create something new, and I do appreciate that they, you know, tied something back again to uh, what something that the way it had been used in the major ways before, anyway. How many more times am I going to stutter and talk in circles? <laughs> anyway. Um, and again, the class layer to Hope is really nice as well, really well written. And we got to see, we got to hear Joseph Morgan's voice over with that. And that's really where it ends. Um, so yeah, overall, a really good finale. Um, again, I won't say it was the best finale yet, but it did uh, flow really smoothly after what happened in last week's episode. I was expecting like some kind of extra like hook to sort of or like a little twist in it or something as the trial was going on, um, but it was rather uh, straightforward. Um, although I did you know like Klaus's planning you know, and the rest of the Michaelsons really put together to have Klaus you know, get Marcel to end up doing some other than just killing him, um, and again like Freya's hand in that whole plan as well with what she did with uh, Elijah and Cole and Rebecca. Um, so yeah, I thought it was really well done, and it just makes me not want to wait a year, over a year to, or whatever it is to see season four. It's going to be a long wait for sure. But yeah, a uh, really good finale overall, though I did enjoy it quite a bit. Um, let me know what you guys thought about it. Uh, you know, leave a comment below. I'm sure there's something I missed or didn't talk about too much. I would love to talk about more with you guys, as usual. And uh, yeah, so if you guys enjoyed the video and the episode, um, you know, I'm starting to run a little bit low on shows now. You know, Vampire Diaries is over, uh, The Hundreds over, The Originals is over now. Um, you know, I still got Game of Thrones and Penny Dreadful. Uh, Strain's not starting until August. <laughs> um, so I might get a little bit sketchier with my reviews, but uh, you know, I'm sure I'll get those out to you guys as quickly as I can with whatever uh, shows come up. Or uh, I'll be doing movie reviews as well, you guys know that. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Catch you guys next time. Look around Facebook. Or I mean, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and the Peace.